the first presentation that we're going to have is going to be from uh, Chip Van Gooten. Chip is with his bio right here. Chip's with Northern Lights and Technical. Uh, Chip's a lifelong boater, enjoying over 35 years in the marine industry, holding various positions, including working on family boats every winter as a kid and as a marina manager, service manager, U.S. Coast Guard six pack captain. He's done, that's right, done everything from racing dinghies up to running one ton vessels. For the past 20 years, Northern Lights has been home with passions as territorial manager, positions, excuse me, as territorial manager for the U.S. East Coast, national OEM, European marketing, and now operations manager for Technical HVAC products. Without further ado, Chip, would you like to come up and tell us about Technical? Morning, everybody. So, um, the goal here for me is to go through HVAC basics so that we, so you have a uh, working vocabulary about what the equipment is, what the function is when you're on the vessel with a, with a client, you know, with an owner or a, or a buyer. Um, we've all been, you know, in these large yachts with, as soon as you get in that engine space, there's so many pieces of equipment, they're all painted white with bells and whistles and clues and clamps. And it's, it's hard to think that anybody would understand all of that equipment. So, in, in this presentation, I'm hoping that we can do a uh, sort of an overview of what you'll find. We'll talk about a um, couple of maintenance items, and I'll also talk about uh, closing food but class societies and for that study. Um, as a manufacturer, we have um, certain um, responsibilities for our clients. Uh, we have stand and system design. That's always a, uh, a, a fun, you know, that's, that's the beginning of the process. Um, you know, there are several systems on board the vessels, but none works harder or longer um, than the air conditioning system. It's literally 24-7. Uh, for the generator sets. So, uh, very important part of the design and uh, application process. The um, <coughs> way we start these processes is the heat analysis, where we will look at the, the heat load on the vessel, the different state rooms, different deck levels of the color of the hull, um, and in some cases, depending on the depth of the engineering that's involved, We'll be looking at building materials, the R values of the glass, uh, how much insulation in the overheads, um, big sliding glass you know, doors off the back of the salon, um, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot to consider when you're going to be sizing the air conditioning system for the vessel. So, first thing. Let's just do the very basics. When we talk about air conditioning, most people automatically think that we are making cold air. Well, really, that's not what the process is about. The process is about removing heat and moving it away from the area that you want to be occupied. So, in, this is a very basic refrigeration cycle where you've got the, the top half is the condensing unit. That's going to take the refrigerant and get it into a vapor state, get a pump position, bring it down to the, to the remote evaporator or uh, air handling unit. And each of those systems removes heat. The first one is on top. We're using water to remove the heat from the refrigerant. The lowest piece there with the evaporator, we're actually using the refrigerant to remove the heat from the air. So as that cycle goes through, we're removing heat from the air, putting it into the refrigerant, and the, the seawater through the condensing coil will pull the heat out and dump it overboard. So that's just removing the heat. We're not, we're not necessarily making cold, but we're still removing heat. So we talk about 
direct expansion. There are two types of systems to just basically find on the vessel um, or anywhere for air conditioning, as far as that's concerned. And they are uh, direct expansion, which means you have the refrigerant is expanding into the air handling unit, and that is what's cooling, or that's what's taking the heat out of the air. So we have the, in this particular one, this is the self-contained unit. We have the condensing unit and the evaporator all in one skid. Um, these are very common. Most vessels will have you know, these are self-contained units, um, smaller vessels. Uh, you know, they stick them under the bunks and set the they are relatively inexpensive, relatively lightweight, and it's an easy installation for the boat builders. But there are some limitations with them. Yeah, sure. With the direct expansion, as I said, you have the condensing unit here, and that's supplying the refrigerant to the evaporator here. So you have uh, self-contained, where both of these are kid, and then you have a split system, where you'll have the condensing unit here, say in the engine of the or the machinery space, and actual evaporator in the cabin, or salon, whatever space you're trying to cool. The connection between these two is high-pressure refrigerant lines that will be insulated. We've got um, seawater going through this, this coil here. We've got refrigerant lines going through this unit here, going to and from this unit. And this system is nice because you can get the smaller space for the evaporator in the bottom of a locker or something like that, and then put all the uh, Fencing units into the engine space or a pump line. Um, this is popular, as I said. Again, it's, it's a small component. Um, they make sense. If you're going to be using um, maybe just the same six, seven spaces that you're going to have to cool. Um, the, remember that with a direct expansion split system, you're going to have one condensing unit or one evaporator, so every space that you're going to put a separate evaporator in, you have to have a separate condensing unit. So all of a sudden, you're going to be stacking up five or six of these units in an engine space, and you've got lots of hoses, and, and uh, you have to have multiple pumps or pump relays. The, again, the systems work very well. Um, most of the boats you see with this type of system are up to 60 feet, no than 70 foot. A uh, boat the other day that had uh, seven units in it. Um, so that's about the limit you're going to see with the fifth system with direct expansion. Uh, I put an asterisk here where it says each evaporator requires one condensing unit. And um, the clarify that you can have two evaporators off of one condensing unit, but the balance of those two evaporators has to be right on. So the engineering and the, really the installation has to be right on because you're only going to have one cabin control to control both of those units. Um, you can't run, you can't have the control for each one, maybe fan speed, but you can't have uh, uh, any other type of control where it's either on, they're both on, or they're both off. And on this vessel I just referenced, he had complained that he was getting different uh, different temperatures and having some trouble in the salon. And the first thing I asked him was, do you know if the refrigerant lines are the same length? He said, oh, absolutely not. And he said, okay, well, the only fix for that is go back through and back up your lines, back up your fancy valve, and we'll get into some of that later. But, um, so it's a system that, that it, it, it is available, but it is um, has some installation issues, so you don't, you don't see a lot of them. So. Where else do we go from there? Um, here. Let's, let's talk about um, 
the water a little bit. Does anybody have any questions on the direct expansion or on the okay. Chilled water, similar refrigeration process where you have compressor going through the condensing coil, down through, this is going to be your, your expansion valve, to an evaporator, back to the thing. The, the difference here is that this is a chilled water unit. You have the compressor, you have the condensing coil, you have the evaporator all in one. So what, what this is doing is making cold water. That's its sole function is to make cold water. When you have multiple spaces in the vessel, and put them, set them up to design them into a closed water loop system where the evaporator, this is a tall piece right here, actually cools that circulating water, it's a closed loop, fill it down to about 40, 40 degrees, um, and it's what I call fresh water mix. Uh, this will go through the vessel through every air handler, back down through, and filled by a temperature thermostat on this. And you'll, you can basically stage, and it's, you know, for some examples in a minute, depending on how large the vessel is, how, how much the load is going to be. And uh, this is really the next step in getting past the direct expansion because at, the, at a certain point you're going to have too much, you don't need all this condensing, condensing in the engine so it takes up too much space, not, not efficient cost-wise uh, or space-wise. Space is always a premium in our business. Uh, So the, the filler units are all going to be installed in the machinery space. Um, you can have more than one air handler for every area of the machine. Obviously, two different multiple stations that are up in zone control. Talk about have uh, large vessels with different spaces, bridge level seating areas which require more cooling. And two levels down to the lower level where you got through and um, no windows. And, uh, you know, that's where your, your cruise quarters are going to be or through the alley, um, mechanical areas, uh, laundry. So it's important to be able to have the ability to set up each individual space with its own, its own system so that you can have heat and cool and different fan speeds and also use humidity control at the same time. Uh, really the only way to accomplish that is with the chilled water system. And you'll see these will start about 60 feet, 60 foot vessels on up. So we talked about heat a little bit. We have two options here with the chilled water system. We've got electric heat strips in the air handlers, and you just only to have immersion. So the heat strips, which is preferred, they actually have a uh, in the air handler itself, you'll have an electric heat strip so that with your cabin control, if you want also knows that they Fill chaser terminology. Uh, while the rest of the boat's being cooled, got a, a space for you know, taking a shower or uh, I need a little more heat in the room. Just adjust the temperature here automatically. We'll close that water valve, stop the cold water from coming in, and then turn the heater on. And fan speed also automatic. So that room is up to seven, seven degrees while you're up on the bridge, you've got the windows open, um, you've got all your handlers up there blowing you know, like, like, air that could possibly 
and <coughs> this is accomplished again by having the heat strips and air handle around the vessel. Truly can control what's going on as far as the temperature and the programming that's available in keypads set up with humidistats where you can actually control the humidity. Uh, a lot of times we get on board the vessel that is cold down in the lower lower depths there, but it's also planted. And that's that's humidity. Um, when it brings the heat a little, raise the temperature up a little bit, you're going to drop in humidity. But at the same time, guys and crews working on deck, they're hot. They want to go down below as that's cool. What you end up with is just spaces that are just this cool tank kind of environment. So. With the humidity controls that are available, that you can pulse it down and off and, and get that humidity back down to a comfortable 50, 50 percent humidity. Um, and this works great for most of the vessels that are out there. If you're going to be taking the boat to Alaska, a lot of cruising in the Northeast in the time, you're probably not going to need much air conditioning, but you're going to need a lot of heat. Um, so immersion heat is actually a heat source, electric heat. It can be diesel fired down um, the boiler. But it's immersion, additionally an electric heat that is in the cold water loop so that the entire boat, the entire loop is heat. And it would be like your, your house up in the room. If you heat on, in the summertime you open the windows or you have air conditioning. Uh, but there's no very little ability to kill down a, a hot spot. It's basically just be turning the heat off and letting the temperature cool you down. But uh, we do uh, some, most of the immersion heat we've done is for Northwest boats, uh, a lot of commercial fishing vessels, vessels, applications. Uh, Give you some examples here. When we talked about filled water earlier, I said that we have stages of filling. Um, this is an example of a four stage, 30 ton system that we built for a client. It has four uh, seven and a half ton <laughs> Four seven and a half ton fillers. So, why would we do that? Well, when you initially cool the boat down, so when we design the boat, set the boat up for uh, heat load, we estimate uh, 30 tons of cooling would be required for that particular vessel. Then we look at the different areas, salon, main deck, owner's stateroom, any, any larger chunks of real estate. And we will look at how much, what, what's the, what's the, uh, each new load is going to be for each of those larger areas. And quickly we're going to see that, well, 30 tons of air is not going to be needed, one, when the boat's still down, and two, if you're in a temperate zone, you know, in winter or west. Um, and if you have just one chiller that big, it's going to be cycling on and off and on and off and on and off. It's and because again, it's just looking at the water temperature and the loop that's going around the boat. That's really all it's, it's, it's controlled by is just the, the temperature of the loop. <coughs> so, to avoid having filler short cycle, we put multiple stages. We know, for instance, in this particular application, that after the boat's filled down, not only are you. Oops, not only are you not even going to use filler number four, except from, from day one when you when set the boat up and, and uh, keeping hot, but generally that one would be used a very very small hour, very low hour. So the number three, two, and one. This filler will probably run all the time, and again in this particular boat we found that. Many times, that's the only filler that's running to keep the whole boat at a stable temperature. 
during the day, the heat of the day, you have the second one kick on, the family comes in, they open the doors and windows and the hatches, the third one will come on and off just to, just to bring down that temperature and loop. But again, this, this type of setup allows you to get the, the full DTUs that are required, but also efficiently keep the boat cool depending on what the situation is with that application is for that day. So you'll see, that's why when you get on these vessels, you see stacks of fillers. And for that, it's simply, they're trying to, uh, whoever the engineering, whoever did the engineering for the filler system has decided we can use this number of this size filler to satisfy certain areas of the boat at certain times. And then kicking on the second and third fillers then brings the temperature to loop down, keeps the boat maintained, and that. And, and as a bonus, you end up with the um, kind of the fourth killer in this case as a spare. So killer control systems also allow this one to say, so this is number one. This one, uh, after a set number of hours, would then switch to number two, then this would be the primary killer, so you can rotate them through so they all get that eat all one time. See on top here, these are the uh, insulated piping that would pour the filled water loop in the boat. Um, probably the things that happen. That would hook to the main trunk line of the boat and it's hooked off to all the air. Another configuration um, for stage 24 time. Uh, this actually has frequency drive for the fillers, giving us a step down on the inrush on the amperage flow so the compressors when they kick in. A uh, little control panel there, two circulating pumps on the bottom. And uh, this is a two stage senton. This is actually a tugboat unit that we built. And <coughs> again, has the frequency drives for the compressors. The thermostat controls for each unit, and what's, what, what's interesting, or what we use as a selling point in a lot of the commercial applications is that no big PLC control panel is required. And this, this is a really good example. You're only looking at the temperature in the loop, and it's a simple mechanical switching. The loop is at, uh, you know, at 50 degrees, we need to get it to 44 degrees, we'll kick on one fill it. If the temperature doesn't come down enough, we set, um, we set the, the uh, spread on the thermostat, the second fill it comes on. And it's just a real simple, you know, very simple installation. Uh, the only breakthroughs are required for the, for the frequency drives and the, uh, and the pumps. And as opposed to a large yacht system where we get into a full blown PLC control panel, rotating compressor, um, boat monitoring, etc. This, this. <laughs> this one is a very interesting. This is a two stage system, still 30 tons, and the we the challenge of this particular project. With the, believe it or not, they ran out of space in the engine. You know, it's hard to believe. But at first, the filler system was supposed to have its own designated um, area, its own, own, own space. By the time that everything was done, I think, I don't know, scuba tanks or a jet ski ended up with it was supposed to be. And we didn't have enough room to put in the required tonnage. The only option at this point was to do the two chillers, but we knew that um, a 15 ton chiller would have the possibility of doing a short cycle because there's going to be too much, uh, too much chiller for the boat when it was uh, already cooled down. So we went to variable capacity because we were ramping up the compressor speed uh, up and down from 35 hertz up to 60 hertz, as well as ramping up and down the raw water pumps and balancing the whole system that way through the PLC program where we can run the 125-foot vessel off of two compressors 
um, and it worked out extremely well. Um, again, this is challenges that we always get involved with with the bigger boats. You know, it doesn't matter how large the engine space is, um, if they leave any space at all, it's going to be taken up by something. And fortunately, you know, with, with generators and with with uh, the uh, air conditioning systems, they just don't leave enough room for the proper maintenance to get around and, and uh, you know, be able to touch some fuel and make sure everything's working, off, uh, working properly. Um, all right, so we talked a little bit about um, condensing coils. Mm -hmm. Back up a second. So, as I said earlier, this is the condensing coil that we use that takes the heat away from the refrigerant. So, this has seawater going around the outside with a double wall tube. Um, water on the outside, the refrigerant on the outside, and water on the inside. And this is a very common um, style of wrap coil that you'll see on. Other manufacturers. So, one thing you will notice ours are much larger. Because they're about an inch and an eighth in diameter. Uh, other manufacturers use a smaller one. Larger diameter that we use allows us to reduce the velocity of the water going through them. One of the formulas that we all have to go by when we're doing refrigeration and air conditioning is that it takes about two and a half gallons a minute per ton, which is 12,000 BTUs, to, to cool that refrigerant enough to make everything work. So we use the same two and a half gallons per minute that, that everybody does, but with our larger diameter, we're slowing, the just slows the water, where the water feet per second flow through it, drops it dramatically, and that will reduce erosion and uh, uh, basically wearing out of the inside of the Because in any air conditioning system, this is the weak link. That's where that water being forced through all the time. And interior, the interior is made of uh, super nickel, um, fine. Maintenance and cleaning, I'll show a whole picture of that in a second here. So this is this would be your sensor coil that you'll commonly see on, on every type of and moving forward, so this is shell and tube. See these large tubes down here? The, the, that, excuse me, those are the condensing coils or the condensers. Uh, completely different style, um, more akin to a heat exchanger on an engine or a generator set. Um, they are much larger. They're designed for larger systems. As you can see, this is a 75-ton um, setup. And we have the compressors here. We have the evaporator plates here. And those evaporators are where we take the uh, from um, loop water. And the condensing coils are where we take the heat from the refrigerant. Now, the sea water is flowing through these and refrigerants flowing through these. This application is preferable in larger systems because you can get um, sort of, a, of a real estate um, situation. It, they are larger and longer, but to get the capacity that you require, going to the way to go. Also, you can take the end plates completely off, rod them out with a, with a steamer, or a, um, uh, a, a big long steam brush. <laughs> And um, so zoom to each end of it. Uh, this is really the way to go on larger boats. You'll see this type of setup when you get up into the 7,500 ton or, or larger systems on larger vessels and commercial vessels. So um, this is a system that we work on with the uh, client. Put the circulating pumps on top. Always have the redundant pumps. They don't, some applications would require two, depending on the, the, the design of the fuel loop, but um, generally it's just an A or B switch. Uh,
Thing. This is one of the batteries over right here. Coming on. We can get somewhere. So the previous slide was a, a rendering that we do. You know, we, do we do everything in the SolidWorks 3D um, rendering for the architects and issues. Then this was designed to be broken down into three pieces and brought into the engine room hatch. But, um, but again, imagine that you're trying to get into one of these situations. There's always got to be something that's the controlling factor. In this case, it was a uh, watertight door going between the, um, uh, going into the engine space. So, after trying to whittle this thing down as much as we could, and it looks like we've left a lot of extra space, but all this space has been taken up with plumbing and valves, etc. When this got to the vessel, uh, they had forgot that they were changing the watertight door. And sure enough, they put a smaller door in. So they had to cut all this apart and re-weld it inside the engine. So welcome to boating. All right. And I don't know how I'm doing on time here, but I'll, I'll try and move forward. So after all that discussion about the, where we make the cold water, we, now we've got to get the cold water out there to, to pull the heat out of the air. Um, air handlers. And We've got various configurations, uh, depending on what the application is going to be. You've got a, a standard, standard one, um, standard you know, single blower on a, on a fan coil. This is a swim line with a blower above a fan coil. That can, that's, uh, I believe that's about nine inches deep, so you just pull the stuff in between the uh, bulkheads and behind it, and a couch. Then we've got um, double blower setups where this is low profile and these are nice because you can bring ducting off going in two different directions. It's great for a larger, you know, like a galley area where you've got the uh, settees for crew. You can have a single control but still have um, okay. you know, the air ducted around. Chip, we're going to jump in on here. You've got a lot of information for us, and okay. thank you very much. Um, we do have a couple of questions that we'd like to ask of you, and also there's more to be learned about uh, air conditioning systems. Chip will be out here at the table for the course of the day in the expo hall. I'm sorry to cut you off short. There's a lot of stuff here. Yeah, I to learn. But we do have a couple of questions. Cheryl from Sheboygan on the Slido app asked, um, what, what is the refrigerant made of, and how does it work? What's the refrigerant that's in the system? It's basically the oil. Uh, it's the, the bottom line is it has an oil. And uh, old school is called Freon. That was it. Or 12 or it, it's, it's an oil-based product. It's oil-based. Okay. And, and do we have any questions from the audience? The, the equipment, is, the answer is yes. Uh, but um, most of the equipment is all designed to operate in a 120 airspace. So, designed to do we have a question over here on the right? Yes, um, on the multi-stage solar uh, system, uh, where you say one has most hours going through two, three, and four, or whatever number, is there um, a PLC control or something where you can even out the number yes. of hours across those? Yes, yes, so there's, there's a system that will rotate those in and out, and you can set Any other questions? I've got one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, 
where something's going on. So just please continue. Okay, yep, this, this, uh, thank you. We could have timed this for our day. Or two tomorrow. Here we go. Yeah, this will be good. So, <coughs> what's wrong with this picture? You will see this is a six stage system. But if you look closely, you'll see the tops of these compressors are brown. Um, some of these coils are turning brown. These are all nice and white down there. So what's causing this? This will be your primary, this is probably killer one, two, three, and four, five, six. So this is caused by blockage in these condensing coils, causing it to overheat and causing that compressor to work really hard. And this particular vessel, both with the captain, he said, he has to replace one killer every year. So when you're thinking about it or not, he just buys one. So by the time he gets it, you know, and the primary complaint is a poorly engineered plumbing system. It wasn't his equipment's fault. Well, on that baby, one final question. How often do you have to clean these clothes? So, and I'm going to bump them. So, all of us have recommended clean schedules. What we like to say is back flush it with just fresh water with a garden hose. Back flush those condensing coils about every three months. And then six months, you may have to do some acid cleaning. But I, I can't stress this enough. Anybody working on a large yacht has an engineer, and they're going to have to maintain, or they're going to set up their schedule for that boat, where that boat is sitting. We've seen boats that will run years with clean systems, and then boats in three months that will get build up, like we see in this pipe here. This is a two and a half inch PVC pipe. That's a good half inch, <laughs> three quarters of an inch build up. Um, this is the inside of the condensing coil. So that's all barnacles that grew in there. This is the only place the water shelf. So you gotta stand top of that. Acid cleaning. You guys have to get in there and look at it. And they're just not doing it. Excellent. Chip, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.